Coming up on Mustang News, Morro Bay changes its annual festival to showcase local food, talent, and businesses. Also, surfers hit the water to support a good cause. And a new app is changing the way students are able to pay for metered parking on campus. Broadcasting live from Cal Poly in beautiful San Luis Obispo, this is Mustang News. Hello and welcome to Mustang News. I'm Allison Stoff. And I'm Peter Gonzalez, here with today's stories. Morro Bay celebrated their 35th annual Harbor Festival this weekend. Laura Hoover went to see what is new this year. Morro Bay has updated their annual Harbor Festival to feature more of what the city has to offer. The festival's executive director, Don Doubledee, knew it was time for a change since the community was no longer being showcased. We brought in all out-of-town vendors and we put a fence around it and charged people to get in and we lost all of the locals. Nobody wanted to come to it. Everybody was mad because we had out-of-town vendors competing with the local vendors and it just wasn't doing anything for the city. Double D helps turn the festival into a celebration of all things Morro Bay, from the food to the entertainment. We have the Fishermen's Association that are cooking all this great seafood out here for us. All these vendors are all businesses from Morro Bay. This fabulous, all day long, wonderful music from all local bands. This full day festival features fresh fish caught in the bay, live music, activities for kids, contests, vendors, and even fireworks to finish off the night. Tom Hafer is the president of the Morro Bay Fishing Organization that brings in fish for the public and local restaurants. Hafer has been a part of the Harbor Festival for 25 years. I think it's, it's good for Morro Bay. It brings in a lot of tourists and it brings in a lot of locals. And, and it's just an all around, you know, good thing. Everybody can experience the seafood that Morro Bay the 35th annual Harbor Festival took place on Saturday along the water on Morro Bay's downtown Embarcadero. Laura Hoover, Mustang News. To learn about other events going on in Morro Bay, visit the city's website at morrobay.org. Sudoku kicked off their first concert of the fall on Tuesday with a bi-weekly concert series called Donut Jazz Tuesdays. Sudoku says the goal is to get more local bands noticed within the slow community. Supervisor Nina Bo said that a lot of people travel from cities such as San Diego and Santa Barbara for Sudoku for events like this. Donut Jazz Tuesdays looks to have swing, blues, funk, and Latin music. The concert also featured Anna Carmela, a singer from Toronto. Bo said that Sudoku pays the music acts in free donuts. The next music event at the Donut Company will be Latin Night on October 18th. TEDx is an international community that organizes TED-style talks all over the world. And for the first time ever, it is coming to Cal Poly. Reporter Allison Martinez has a preview of what to expect from the event. We'll craft an overall experience that will leave people smiling, crying, and inspired. TEDx Cal Poly is almost here, and the students that are making it happen are a team of 24. Eli Birch, executive producer, tells us about the event's theme, Plot Twist. We came up with that theme because we realized that, especially for college students, we're all going through things in our lives that can totally put us on a different course. Um, whether that's a conversation we have, a new technology that's created, a class you even take. The event will have 10 speakers total. This will include three professors, three students, two alumni, and two community members. Each of them have been specially picked to speak at TEDx. I think that we can actually make such an impact by getting these 10 people on stage to share their ideas. We have no far how, like, no clue how far those are going to take us. Birch says TED is an outlet for people to be able to share their experiences. It's a way for people who have passions or dreams or ideas um, that they believe the world needs to know about. And it's, a, it's a, just a place for them to express those. And I think we're giving these people with these passions and these ideas, we're giving them a way to share their voice. Birch says the plan is to have a large TED event every year and smaller salons throughout the year. The events would be all based on what the students want to hear next. It's an opportunity to educate yourself in ways that you might not get normally on Cal Poly's campus. Allison Martinez, Mustang News. The event is sold out, but will be live streamed online. For more information, visit tedxcalpoly.com. Coming up after the break, 
Say goodbye to fast food. Pokey Chef now offers fast and healthy food options. And we'll take an inside look at the Center for Entrepreneurship in San Luis Obispo. My new dad, dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. My new mom and I have a lot in common. <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. So shiny. That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look. An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. <gasps> That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. San Luis Obispo's first Pokey restaurant is now open. Kara Benson got the inside look on what Pokey Chef is serving up. Pokey, it's a uh, Hawaiian dish. It's uh, a form of a uh, raw fish. It contains mostly tuna, but over here, is, uh, this is mainland Pokey. Uh, which we have more options of fish, different kind of fish, tuna, salmon, albacore, um, scallops, uh, um, even vegetarian options like shiitake mushrooms and tofu. I think it's a really quick, delicious, and healthy way to eat. There's a lot of options that are quick uh, that you can get. But most quick options usually are very unhealthy for you. Sometimes the students are very on the rush, or sometimes they're tired and they don't really want to cook. So this is a good, good healthy solution. How is it? It's great. I like pokey because there's a uh, many different variety you can mix. You know, seven different sauces that we make in-house. All the sauces are made daily fresh and all the fishes are cut fresh daily. Um, my husband loves this place. And what about Pookie Chef does he like want so much? Um, everything, literally. Can I show you what he got? Yeah. <laughs> he loves everything. So he got ev literally everything. Um, he loves the fresh ingredients and the, um, the fresh fish and all the, the fun toppings. It just makes me happy to uh, deliver good food. Um, it's, that's my goal. Yeah. Pokey Chef serves Pokey Bowls and just recently starting serve serving Pokey Ritos. Pokey Chef is located on the corner of California and Taft next to Boba Stop. The Hot House is a small space in downtown San Luis Obispo that helps new businesses. Our reporter, Michael Frank, took a look inside this business hub. One of the things we like to see is that you have a team behind you, or at least have another co-founder. If you can't convince one person to believe what you believe, how are you going to convince a million, or 10 million, or 100 million? Nelson is one of many qualified employees at Cal Poly's Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. The CIE's downtown location called the Hot House just moved into a new 15,000 square foot space on Higuera, a huge upgrade from their previous 5,000 square foot meeting place. They are now situated in the heart of downtown Slow. Nelson is incredibly impressed with the Cal Poly students that have been chosen to participate in the CIE programs. 
they were very different than the business students I knew when I was in school. When I was in school, the business students were like driven by greed and desire to buy things and have Porsches and things like that. It was all greed is good. And these kids, they wanted to change the world. The space has several conference rooms, a workspace for local businessmen and women, and a large discussion room. Judy Mahan, a program director at the CIE, summed up the hothouse in just a few words. Yeah, it's an entrepreneurship hub in San Luis Obispo. Many programs that the CIE offers take place in the hothouse, giving students all the resources they need to start a business. Mahan and the rest of the CIE staff are dedicated to helping all of San Luis Obispo. Our goal is also to provide um, and support economic development for the county, so to see more and more businesses thrive, grow and thrive here. The Hot House is located on High Garrett Street, above Ross Clothing Store. Michael Frank, Mustang News. For more information about the center, visit the office downtown. A charity surf competition was held last weekend in Slow County. Our reporter J.B. Garcia went to the event and talked to some of its founders. The Surfing for Hope Foundation hosted its fifth annual surfing contest in Pismo Beach on Saturday. The main focus of this year's event was to provide the children whose parents have been diagnosed with cancer an outlet through the freedom of surfing. This year is, it's not kids who have cancer, but kids whose parents are getting chemotherapy or struggling or have passed away from cancer. These kids, you know, they're not going to sit in a, a group therapy session when their parents are going through cancer or passed away. They just want to go out and forget about everything, and that's what we, we do. We take them out on the water. The event begins with a Friday evening paddle out, reception dinner, and auction, and it continues into Saturday with the surf contest and live music. Since 2012, Surfing for Hope has raised more than $160,000 to support the Hearst Cancer Resource Center and the Hearst Cancer Resource Center's Angels of Hope Fund, which provides financial assistance to cancer patients. There's so many people that get inspiration and strength through the power of surfing that uh, every year it's gotten bigger and bigger. All proceeds from Surfing for Hope will benefit the Hearst Cancer Resource Center at French Hospital Medical Center in San Luis Obispo. To help people dealing with cancer. So that's, that's what we love to do and we'll do it for him with, 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 with love. For Mustang News, J.B. Garcia. For, for, more, for more information about Surfing for Hope, visit surfingforhope.org. Coming up after the break, find out where Ski Club is hosting their biggest event of the year. Members of the Central Pacific Ski Club will be The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? 1 in 195 million. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? 1 in 68. I'm Jamie McMurray and my niece has autism. Learn more at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs. taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers. For them, 
and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Members of the Central Pacific Ski Club will be traveling to Whistler, Canada for their big trip this January. The big trip reveal was hosted downtown at the Fremont Theatre for new and returning members to get excited for this year's main ski club event. Media director Sienna Streamfellow and President John Hammerlund were part of organizing the trip. Uh, we play like games and we play our big trip reveal video and you get to meet like the new board and also just like start meeting new people that are in the club. Whistler is easily the best mountain out of all the mountains that we go to. It's the biggest mountain in the northern continent. Members pay a little more than $850 for transport, lodging, and lift tickets. To learn more about Central Pacific Ski Club, visit their Facebook page. Say goodbye to loose change. Using over 2,000 locations across the United States and now here on the Cal Poly campus, the Park Mobile app allows users to pay for meters using their credit card. Are you tired of leaving class early because you have to pay for the parking meter? We've all been there. But no need to fumble with loose change anymore. Park Mobile is a free app that allows payment of meters by credit card. According to Marlene Kramer, Associate Director of UPD Parking, Cal Poly has 323 meters across campus. Each meter is now Park Mobile enabled with a lime green sticker containing the zone number for that set of meters. Once registered on the app, students enter the zone number of the meter that they are parked at on the home screen, along with the vehicle, payment information, and amount of time they wish to park. You can only pay up to the maximum time limit, and then you have to move to a different meter. Okay. So, um, and, and that's because there's certain areas that are really impacted, and we need that turnover, and that's where there's that time limit on those certain meters. While the time does not show up on the meter itself, UPD has software that shows which meters in each zone are currently active through the Park Mobile app. There is also the ability to set reminders and extend your session if needed straight from the app. So you can spend more time here and less time here. Finally, the app has a map showing the location of every Park Mobile meter on campus, along with the ability to place a pin where you parked your car. Since the first day of fall quarter to this past Tuesday, there have been 928 sessions of Park Mobile used to pay for the meters across the Cal Poly campus. Allison Stoff, Mustang News. In honor of Rideshare Week, Cal Poly Parking is encouraging students to use alternate modes of transportation to get to campus. And coming up after the break, we'll bring you this week's San Luis Obispo weather report with Barbara Levin. Full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There 
are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at Discover the Forest. Welcome back. I'm Barbara Levin here with your Mustang News weather report. So as you can see, we're starting in the North County at Paso Robles um, at 85 degrees and temperatures are going to be slightly decreasing as we head down to Santa Margarita at 83 degrees. And as we go south through the grade, we'll be hitting 83 degrees in San Luis Obispo. And heading down to the South County, we're starting at Aurora, Aurora Grande at 85 degrees. and Although it will be warmer temperatures in the north, as we head south through Napomo and Santa Maria, uh, temperatures will be decreasing slightly and will be ending with 76 degrees in Vandenberg. And beaches. Um, temperatures, as you can see here, will be slightly increasing as we head to the southern beaches. We have 71 degrees in Cayucas, 75 degrees in Morro Bay, 84 degrees at Avila Beach, 84 degrees at Pismo Beach, and 83 degrees in Oceano Beach. So it's a great day to go to the beach all over the Central Coast. And heading to our five-day forecast. Today we have 84 degrees, um, clear and sunny, and tomorrow temperatures are going to be increasing up to the 90s at 94 degrees and it'll be partly cloudy. However, the clouds are gonna to start to go away Saturday, and the temperatures are gonna stay consistent in the 90s at 91 degrees. And Sunday, they'll be slightly decreasing to 86, and we'll be starting off next week at 76 degrees. Once again, I'm Barbara Levin with your Mustang News Weather Report. Back to you, Allison. A replica of a famous California ship is in Morro Bay for the next week. Brian Roberts reports on the details of this boat. A replica of the San Salvador, which was the first European ship to sail up the coast of California in 1542, has been docked in Morro Bay since September 30th and will be there until October 9th. Tours are being offered daily from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tickets are $7 for adults and $5 for children. All proceeds from the tours will go towards the museum's efforts to build a new interpretive center. Bob McKay, a member on the Board of Trustees at the Maritime Museum, said, Morro Bay has a long and varied maritime history and that it should be preserved so that people can find out what it was like here over the years. Yeah. Due to the ship's authenticity and popularity, it wasn't easy for the Maritime Museum to schedule a time for the San Salvador to dock in Morro Bay. We, we tried for two years to get this thing to come because it's just been recently launched and uh, we were going to have it last October but they didn't have it quite ready. The San Salvador was the lead ship on the expedition to find a northern route to Japan. Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo was the leader of the expedition. And he was a conquistador. And he was one of the people who ravaged Mexico. They wanted to find a northern route to Japan. And uh, of course, they didn't make it. They didn't know what they were getting into. McKay said that the fundraiser is looking good and is pleased with the community's interest in the San Salvador. So far, we've had real good response in Morro Bay. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, they were, this place was just mobbed with people coming on board. And there's been a real steady flow on, on the days it's been open this week. The San Salvador will be offering tours through Sunday, October 9th. Brian Robbins, Mustang News. For more information about the ship and other Morro Bay attractions, visit morrobaymaritime.org. Coming up after the break, we'll have Laura Hoover with your week's sports report. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! <laughs> Still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad is cute. You're looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. <laughs> They're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. Lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you.
It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Hi everyone, I'm Laura Hoover here with your weekly sports update. Even though we are in the middle of fall sports, which include football, soccer, golf, and more, Cal Poly has added a new women's rugby team. Nate Edelman has the story. Cal Poly Athletics welcomes women's rugby. Cal Poly rugby. Athletics welcomes women's rugby, a new team on campus. James Tesserero is the head coach of the women's team as well as the men's and said that the desire for creating a women's team has been there for years. When we start up uh, with our men's club and we sign up new players, we always have some pretty strong interest from incoming freshmen and women. Uh, they're often asking whether there's a women's team, whether they can play for Cal Poly, and until now we've had to tell them there is no team. Jessica May, a player for the women's rugby team as well as a manager for the men's team, is thrilled that she can have a rugby team to play for before she graduates. When we showed up, or when girls kind of started coming out to games and like watching games and being interested, they kind of saw that there, there was an interest in that they actually could field a Cal Poly women's team also, that they could get the numbers to actually play and make a team go. So uh, this year it was really nice to get the email at the beginning of the school year saying that there was a team, there was a women's team that I could finally play on after four years. The team is ready to practice all fall and winter to showcase their talent in the spring. In the spring there's a national sevens college championships so in the springtime we'll uh, kind of reassemble here do about an eight-week training program and hopefully qualify for the uh, Div 2 national championships. Nate Edelman, Mustang News. For more information stop by one of their practices on Monday and Wednesday nights at 6.30 on the lower fields. Three Cal Poly sports teams play at home this weekend after many of them played on the road last week. Tonight, men's soccer kicks off a four-game conference homestand in hosting Cal State Northridge at Spano Stadium. The Mustangs at 2-6-1 need a good showing at home to improve from seventh place in conference. Later this weekend, the Mustangs host UC Irvine at 7 p.m. Saturday night at Spano Stadium. The Cal Poly women's volleyball team also plays at home this weekend, hosting UC Irvine tonight. The Mustangs sit tied for fourth in the Big West Conference and need a few wins to rise up in the standings. And this Sunday, the women's soccer team hosts Cal State Northridge for the fourth game of the conference schedule. The Mustangs are currently fifth in conference, but just three points behind the top spot. Kickoff for the game against Northridge starts at noon. That's all for sports at home this weekend. For updates and scores from this weekend, go to mustangnews.net and click the sports tab. Back to you guys at the desk. Help Mustang News celebrate our 100 years of news by joining us for pizza with the press. Enjoy free pizza while getting a behind-the-scenes look at how our team of student journalists put together our print, broadcast, and radio content. Pizza with the Press will be October 13th at 11 a.m. in the Mustang Newsroom in Building 26. That's all we have time for today. I'm Peter Gonzalez. And I'm Allison Stopp. Thanks for joining us, and have a great weekend.